Okay, welcome back. Today we have two K7400s. One of them is blowing HOTs, and the other one is completely, totally dead. So we're going to do our best to try and figure them both out. So the other side of this has, you know, shipping information, so we're going to open the bottom side. Hopefully they survived in one piece. Uh, looks like we have the backing protection boards for the neck boards. Anything else in here? Doesn't appear to be. So we'll set the box aside. And we'll, I guess we'll just start with this one. Primal Rage, DOA. Okay. Um, pots all seem okay. Neck board? Hey, we got one of the newer neck boards, or newer chassis like last time, with the newer uh, heat sinks. Uh, they all seem okay. Of course, the resistors are smashed over like they always are. But they seem alright. And it's been capped, so that's good or bad, depending on your situation, because you don't know how well it was done, but we'll inspect it. Um, all of the... everything on the neck board appears to be in really good condition. So that's good. Um, Alright, well that's uh, promising to say the least, at least for that. But in the meantime here, let's just so it's not in our way, well, let's disconnect it. And uh, that way we can make sure we keep it nice. The This was not looped through there, but I don't think that's critical. So we'll take this and set this aside. We already inspected our capacitor. Oh, capacitors. I'm looking at, I was looking right at the capacitor when I said that. I meant to say we already inspected our remote board pots. So we can set that aside as well. So let's get this out of the way. And let's see what we have going on. Okay. Uh, DOA. So, whenever you have a dead chassis, a dead 7400, 7500, U2000, U5000, I always go after the switch mode power supply chip or Q703. Because if Q703 is bad, the board will be totally dead. So... But let's inspect here first. Everything seems to be in order. Uh, for some reason, the subcontrast is all the way down. Or all the way up. And that was all the way up. Hmm. I'm going to put it back to center just for now. And I'm also going to put all of the color pots to center as well, like I normally do. Sometimes I forget to do it on camera, but I always do it. In case you don't see me do it sometimes, I always do it, I just forget sometimes to do it on camera. Wow, the uh, the blue was all the way down. Hmm. Alright, so we got that complete. Um, okay, well, let's check to make sure that we have a good Q703. It is kind of bent up. But with a totally dead chassis, I suspect Q703. And then what we'll do is we'll get the uh, light bulb out and we'll do the light bulb test. We can remove this leg of L100. This, uh, I'm getting too old. Inductor. This inductor here, we can take this leg out and we can test and do our, our light bulb test. If we get a, a light bulb to light up, we'll test our B plus and assuming that that works, then we can Something else must be going on. But I'm assuming the light bulb test will fail because the chassis is dead. Uh, so we'll check Q703 and then we'll see about the switch mode power supply chip here. So let's check Q703 first. Uh, 
Actually, you know, I was I was told one of these is dead and the other one has uh, is blowing HOTs. So let's make sure that we actually have the correct one here. This other one over here, because uh, the owner of these told me the one that was dead has the chip missing out of it. Okay, so uh, okay, good. All right. So this one has the switchbone power supply chip missing. So this is the one that's that's dead. So we can set this aside and leave that for video number two. This must be the one that's blowing the HOT. I'm glad I checked that. So let's test this here. Indeed, the HOT is shorted. Okay, so well, in that case, uh, let's, let's go through and test all of our normal components. Uh, the B+, plus, the shutdown pot's been replaced and the B-plus pot's been replaced. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm weary of that. Let's test R104. 10K is good. Um, Q703. I don't think that's a normal reading. I don't think that's a normal reading. Uh, of course, Q703 is missing from that one. Um, that just, I don't think that, I thought that it was supposed to be uh, 1.0 to one leg. And point in the point six on the other one. You know, uh, I'm skeptical. Let me grab. I've got a working U two thousand over here. I got a working U two thousand here. Let's test Q seven hundred three on this one. They're all the same, so that it should be a good uh, comparison here. Because that just doesn't seem right. I could be wrong. But I don't think that's correct. Let's find out here. Uh, as you can see, Q703 is the same thing right there. So if we go to center and then this leg. Yeah, see there's 1.2. And there's the 0.6. That's what it's supposed to read. I don't think our Q703 is good. That's, that's a good reading there. And then this one, yeah. So I'm going to change that Q703. Maybe that's our problem. So I'll put this one away here. Yeah, that may be our, our smoking gun. We can get this fixed pretty quick. And check this out. I just happen to have a whole bunch of those. Somewhere. Those are, I got a bunch of transistors here for the color, the color transistors for these chassis. Um, some switch mode power supply chips. Where, oh where, have my little transistors gone? Oh where, oh where can they be? There they are, all the way at the bottom. So here I have a bunch of Q703s. So let's, I need to be a bit more organized, but I'm too lazy. All right, so if my theory is correct, we can take this guy out of here. There we go, and clean up our I gotta turn my fan on here. Okay. So let's test 
our original versus a new one. And just see what we get. Okay. It should be like this. Alright, let's start with a new one. We'll go to the... We're on the diode, so we'll go to the center and we'll touch this leg. 0.6 and this leg, open. So if we go to this one, and we go to center, stay there, stay there. Okay, center, we go to this leg, gosh darn it. This leg, 0.6, this leg, open. Well, that's correct. Why is this reading like that? Huh. In circuit, it's not reading properly. Well, I'll tell you what, let's just put... This appears to be original. So let's put a new one in there just to see. And uh, I'll keep this aside, and if we put a new one in and it doesn't fix it, I'll just keep this as a replacement for the one I just replaced. I gotta see if I can get this glue off of here and get this out. Nope. Well, we're going to forego the uh, heat sink. Alright, so let's get a new one in. And see what happens. Why are you being like that? Because it's not wide open. There we go. What in the heck is going on? They get glue in the hole. Yeah, that hole is blocked. Where do I have that sitting up here? Let's see here. Huh. There's something stuck in that hole. I think it's glue. I can't get the hole opened up. There we go. Okay. Let's try this for a third time. <laughs> I still can't. The holes are all open wide and it still won't go in there. Ugh. What in the heck? Let's just do it this way. Let's cut these off of here. Goodbye. Okay. Um. There we go. All right. Now let's solder this bad boy in.
wire in there it is. Okay, so now let's see what it reads with a new one in there. Center. 0.6, it's climbing because it was warm. It's hot from the solder. The other leg. So something is bad that's making that read that way. Very interesting. So let's put these back. Now that we know it's good, I don't know why they put heat sinks on this so that they don't get warm, but let's put these away. Okay, put that in there. All right, so we know it's not 703, but something is causing it to read that way. Now we got to figure out what that is. And it could be the HOT being shorted, so let's remove that. We can't really do any kind of testing with the shorted component in there. So it's going to come down to trying to figure out what is the problem and getting it resolved. Just like anything else. Uh, there's a giant ground plane on this one. Or not a ground plane, just a giant plane. Like an Antonov. A giant plane. Alright, that should be sufficient. Alright, so let's get this out of here. Of course. All right. Dropping everything. So we get our screw and our nut, put that out of, out of sight, out of mind. Let's get our HOT out of here. We'll test it out of circuit. It is not shorted. Oh, it is shorted. Okay. <laughs> That's weird. Yep. Definitely bad. So we'll put that aside. Let's put that over there. Okay, one, there's a couple of components that can cause an HOT to blow. Not blow. If it would blue, it would be open. No, to short. Uh, that is C121. If C121 is bad on the K7400, that'll cause HOT to short. And then Q801. Q801 is bad. This guy right there, that could cause it as well. So let's test Q801. Uh, Q801 should be this guy. 0.7 and open. 0.6 and 1. Let's see what this one means here. Uh, this one doesn't have... there it is, Q708. Am I thinking of the wrong one? I think... 801, 708. No, it's 801. Hmm. The U2000 apparently doesn't doesn't have the 701. Or 801, I mean. Well, that's no big deal. I The, the thing we're looking for is we're just, we're just checking to make sure it's not shorted. And it's not shorted. So Q801 is not shorted, that's all we're worried about. 0 0.6, 0 0.9, 0 0.7, yeah. So I don't think that's the problem. So next we'll check C121, which is this guy here. And it is indeed not shorted. But it reads 3 mega ohm across there. I don't know if that's normal. I don't think I don't think I have a 7400 on hand, unfortunately. 
Oh, you know what? I do, but it's unpopulated. Yep, outstanding. So here's a donor. Oh, no, it's a 7500. But that'll still work because it still has C121. And it's not in circuit anymore. But we can always solder it in and see what it reads across C121. Alright, just to see if it reads in the mega ohm like the other one was there. And. Yep, yeah, same type of thing, the 8 meg ohm. Okay, well, so apparently that's normal. So C121, as far as I can tell, that's okay. So what do the pads read? What do the HOT pads read with the HOT out? They're not shorted. So it's nothing on the, nothing on the board is shorted currently because if there was something on the board shorted on the HOT circuit you would see that here and we don't so let's take a look here and see if we can come up with any type of answer as to why this would be occurring let's test our switch mode power supply chip we should get on our diode mode we should get 1.0, I think, or 1.5, 1.5, and then 1.7 this way, 1.5, eh, I thought it's supposed to be 1.7, but we'll take 1.5. This should be a voltage drop, and this should be a voltage drop. Yes. So I think that's okay. Hmm. Well, sometimes these polycaps, these polycaps here can be bad, but there, if any of these were shorted, these three polycaps, you'd see it across the HOT legs. But we can test just to make sure. Um, they're going to be, let's see, this one is open, this one open, and I think this one open. Well, all right, so the polycaps aren't shorted. Um, is that diode missing? There's normally a diode down in here. It's D706. I'm fairly certain there's supposed to be a diode down in here. You see it's missing. Let's look at uh, our 7500 partner here. Um, nope, that was never installed on there. I, but I, 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 gotta, I swear I have a 7400 down here. I guess not. Okay, well, no big deal. Um, Let's test some other stuff here. 302 is okay. 303 is okay. 0.0? .0. Is that supposed to be 0, 0.0? Huh. R823 is 0 0.1. Resistors don't short, so let's see what that reads on this U2000. It's the same resistor. One point five, one point six. So I think we're on the, we're onto something here. Zero point two. That's a short, my friends. 
Let's remove this from the circuit and see what it reads now. I wonder if it reads open. 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 0 0.5. Well, let's just remove this completely and replace it because that's not right. So here's that uh, 7500. Let's see what that one reads. 1.6. So something's going on with that. Let's replace this. On to here. First, let's see what the what this reads. Okay, so we don't have a short on the actual board. I wonder if resistors don't short, so I wonder if that resistor just went way out of tolerance. And by way out of tolerance, I mean reading, reading short. Is that even part of the circuit? I don't know, but It's some it's a discrepancy for sure. So let's replace it. See what that reads. Got a capacitor here that's popped a lead. All right, so what do we get now? It's still hot, so three point five, four, three. All right. Uh, I think we have a resistor here that has gone way out of tolerance. 0 0.4, yep. It may be that critical, I can't say. So, um, let's leave the HOT out of the circuit and let's do our light bulb test. Okay, we don't need uh, anything hooked up for this because all we have to do is remove L100 from the circuit and the only thing that's going to power up is our power supply section. Uh. Okay. Let me grab my light bulb. Follow me, light bulb! Over here, Christmas tree! All right, let's get our power. And let's get our meter and we can test our B, B plus here, volts DC. Okay, we're going to have to hook on ground here uh, strategically. Not sure how I can do this. That should work. Uh, got another. Um, another one here. We'll set that there and then to test our B plus is test point two zero two. 
This guy right here, test point 202, is where you hook up to test your B+. So we'll go there. So now we should be able to read B+. And all we got to do is tap this to the frame. Tap this to the frame and get another alligator clip to go to our uh, power section. All right. Um, I think we're ready to do this. Let's get this in the shot here. All right. So let's turn this on. It's running. We'll touch our ground. Actually, let's do it this way. You see we have no voltage. Let's touch our ground and touch this. And it works. Our power supply section is good, but why aren't we reading any voltage? Hmm. Turn it off. We should be able to read our voltage that way. Uh, we're on our test point. And we're hooked up to ground. Oh, herp a derp, herp a derp. I don't have. Oh, no, that's right. I've got this hooked up to here. We have our ground, we have our power to our test point. I wonder why. Oh, because I'm a total moron. This isn't even powered without this in there. <laughs> I have to go directly to the source. Oh, it's late, and I had to work all day. 152, good lord. Well, there's no load, I guess, but... Now let's try this again. Let me turn this on. Okay, we're hooked up. Here's our ground, and... Let's see what we get. 104. Yeah, that's way too low. Should be 117. So let's see if we can turn that up. Uh, I gotta turn this off because this is the kind of uh, pot that you can short out if you turn it up. Or if you stick something in there with it powered, you can short it out. Okay, back on. It's still 104. Hmm. Now that could be that the wattage of the bulb I'm using. Uh, here's my. I don't know which way this pot turns up. Well, that's all the way down, right? <laughs> that pot is 100... Uh, that pot was... It, it like... Right there is all the way down. And it was roughly a, a 30 second... 30 second of an inch of a turn. That was all the way down. Huh. So the, someone had the B-plus pot all the way down. Let's turn it up just a quarter turn there and try this again. See, now we're much higher. 112. We're getting there. I'm going to stop about 115 if we can get to 115. Because it depends on the wattage of the bulb is what... Uh, 118? That's a bit too high, so let's just turn it down slightly. There we go. Turn it back on. 117. Outstanding. Okay, so let's discharge this. And, okay, are we actually discharged? Let's uh, test this. Yep, 1.7 volts. Well, there you have it. The B plus was way all the way down. I don't know how that would have... We had a B plus completely turned down. We had a resistor out of tolerance. Um, let's go ahead and test this resistor one more time. 2.0. All right. I'm liking the way this is going. So let's throw another HOT in here. Make sure it tests good in circuit. Hook it up and see what happens. Okay, I'm, I'm cutting back in here real quick because I was doing some testing and it turns out that I think we have fixed our problem. And I say that because after replacing this resistor, I got a new HOT in there and it, I put in one of these F, FJL, FJL6920. You can see it right here. It's a, it's a, the one that was in there was a, a C3688. And I, I like to use these 
FJL 6921s because they're a much more robust HOT and they handle um, voltage is much better and they're just a better HOT for this type this chassis and also works for other ones too but I like to use these ones they're a bit better more robust and less susceptible to being uh, shorted out but I think we have solved our issue because if we look at Q703 now remember how it was reading uh, voltage a diode voltage drop across both leads well if I go to the middle and this one there's our voltage drop like before. Now if you recall I went to the outside one and it was reading a 6.6 voltage drop as well. Well look what it reads now. There's our, our 1.0. You know 0 0.9. But yeah that's there. Oh, one point. That's what we're supposed to read is somewhere close to one. So I think we have hopefully fingers crossed we have fixed the problem by replacing this resistor and by correctly adjusting our B plus. Now I have no idea about the shutdown. Um, we can take note of where it's sitting right now. And it's all the way it's all the way down too. It it was you can see saw where it was sitting. It's absolutely turned all the way down. That's all the way down. That's all the way up, down, up. So we're gonna go halfway. Uh, as a matter of fact, you know what? Let's use this one as a guide and let's read the resistance across that shutdown pot man the shutdown pot and the b plus pot were both all the way down well no wonder it's got it had issues huh. let's use this as a guide let's go to our shutdown pot what is our reading on our shutdown pot it is 4.5k that's the other side. Okay, so 4.5K is what we want to set it to for an ideal setting because this this chassis is working fine. I just had a curiosity at the at the middle adjustment there. Let's see what it reads at the just setting where it's at now. 4.4. Um, hey, close enough. That should be just fine. But it was completely turned down as well as as well as the B plus pod. No wonder it had problems. And I almost forgot to put L, the uh, L100 inductor back in. I did that once before doing this test. That goes here. Oh, come on. Okay, that's back in. All right, now I think we're ready. Let's get it on the tube and cross our fingers and hopefully it works. All right, all hooked up. Anode neck yoke ground video power and our remote board is at the ready. Um, let's turn contrast and brightness all the way down. And let's see if it powers up. Um, I'm betting that it will. So let's see. Uh, one, two, three. Powered right up. Hot dog. Now, let's get our meter set up. I should have done this beforehand, but it's late and I'm getting uh, senile in my old age. So let me pause here. Let's get this hooked back up now that we know what power's on and make sure we're still at 117. So hang on one second. Okay, so it's a bit unorthodox. I have two black leads going here, but I have, I'm hooked up to our test point right there, our test point 202, we're hooked up to our tube ground and we're bleeding off, slowly bleeding off our uh, voltage from just turning it on. So let's try again and see what we're reading. One, two, three. 111. Ah, oh, see, you can't really trust the light bulb test because it depends on, where'd my screwdriver go? Oh, here it is. It depends on the wattage of bulb you're using because the lower wattage of bulb the lower um, load on the system so I'm gonna have to turn up our B plus pot to get closer to 117 here let's try that okay one two three how about that dead on accurate 117 outstanding 
So, uh, we have an MK1 board running here, and look at that! What do you know? Vertical hold. Ba-boom! Ha-ha! <laughs> uh, and we're back, we're floating around 117 to 118, I saw there, but uh, once the image gets stable, it's nice and stable. F uh, fan freaking tastic That was easy! I'm uh, chalking this one up to possible... Uh, I'm not going to say user error because we had a bad component, but the shutdown pot and the B plus pot should not have been all the way down. That was problem number one. And it might even have worked uh, with that resistor being out of tolerance. It's only out of tolerance by 1.2 ohms, but it's a crucial, uh, a crucial rating apparently. Uh, you can see there I have the old resistor and the old HOT and my bag of replacement HOTs. Like I say, I like this one a lot better, the FJL6920. Uh, but look at that. Wow, after getting everything adjusted properly for our shutdown on our B+, getting our bad component replaced and the HOT replaced, we are floating steady at 117.1, and we have an image. Look at that. Uh, let's make sure we have... I'm not going to bother with colors or anything like that, or brightness, or... I have brightness and contrast down, but we can turn... See, even with brightness all the way down, it's too bright. You can see the red. So let's turn our... Uh, flyback down until we lose roughly there. That's about where we want our flyback to be. Now we can adjust our brightness and our contrast. There we go. Beautiful. Um, now we're 16.9. 16, uh, 16 Perfect. So now we can do, let's do our height. Uh, there we go. Let's do vertical position. Vertical position is operational. Let's do width. Um, do you Goro forearmed bastard? There we go. Um, each position. Width. Well, width is slightly slightly small. Um, that could be because I'm using a Hanorex Polo tube and not a K7400 tube, but it's close enough. If we go each position, you can see here we only have the tiniest bit of black on each side so I would be happy with that if this was my setup I'm it's not too crucial I mean there's no there's no line on the side or anything like that so um, yeah um, we have each position we have width we have contrast brightness we have vertical hole we have horizontal position we have vertical position we have height everything is working fine we're back to 117 well 117.3 116.8 depending on what's on the screen but 117, we're perfect, uh, and it is operational. So if we had something else wrong, it would have zapped out by now. So it turns out Q703 is probably okay originally. The original one was probably fine. But um, the moral of this story is we had a bad resistor. What was it? 863? It was R823. R823 was bad, and I think the HOT was blowing because possibly because of the bad 823 but most likely because of the two um, pots being all the way down so there we have it let's see if i can adjust our our contrast is a bit too high because we got some bleed there that's better let's adjust our focus if i can make sure we can get something better here ah there you go and look at that beautiful beautiful is a combination of beautiful and butimous. <laughs> it's late. Uh, just all right. Nice, quick, easy repair. Uh, I was hoping that that would go this way. Uh, you know, the HOTs being shorting out can be a real head scratcher sometimes. But uh, fortunately, on this instance, we lucked out. So, thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. Like, share, and subscribe if you want. And stay tuned for the next one, which is um, completely dead. Hopefully, it's as easy as this one. We'll find out. So, see you on that one.